past 18 months of the Nuffield Scholarship have been life-changing, both personally and within my business. The first part of my Nuffield experience was completing the application form and picking a title. I chose Arable Farming, where next? The last 10 years I had a very clear agenda when returning to the family farm. Arable Farming was changing dramatically. Wheat, price, wheat prices plummeting from £190 a tonne to £65, with unsustainable operating costs of £180 an acre. We had to restructure and reshape, incorporate and expansion to achieve £80 an acre. Operational costs to stay sustainable. Reflecting back to 1999, the business today is unrecognisable. I travelled extensively for 20 weeks to find the next direction for the animal industry. My knuckle travel started in America and Canada, followed by Eastern Europe, Western Europe, then to China, Western Australia, Eastern Australia, New Zealand, both islands, India, and finally Argentina. Before I went travelling, my perception was that the UK was leading in world agriculture. I was shocked to see how far we had fallen. Three words I learned at the Contemporary Scholars Conference, which will stay with me for the rest of my life. Adapt, innovate and overcome. My travels taught me two fundamental reasons for the success of businesses is down to logistics and management. On travelling to other parts of the world, where they have extreme weather conditions and lack of subsidies, you meet inspirational people with a can-do attitude, which is refreshing. On my travels, I came across controlled traffic farming. This is the area I concentrated the majority of my studies. Just by controlling where we drive in a field can have a positive impact of 18% on a gross margin. On a 1,000-acre arable farm, this is equivalent to £150,000 additional income. Controlled traffic farming also brings the added benefit of reducing the fuel down to as much as 12%. 25 years ago, a large tractor would have been 100 horsepower weighing 5 tonnes. Today, 600 horsepower weighing 25 tonnes is not uncommon. The picture with the glass combine shows us combining two seasons ago. The chase of being a tractor are driving on uncompacted fresh soil because manufacturers do not build an auger long enough for the chase of being to run on the previous combine's wheelies. The Australians on the second picture have adapted the chase bin to overcome this problem by making a hydraulic belt. This enabled them to travel on the previous combine's wheelings and compacting where the compaction goes in a field. In the 1970s, my grandfather was awarded the 10 tonne hectare tide from ICI, as many were. Our overall average has increased over the past 30 years, but we're not farming 15 tonnes a hectare of wheat. Each year farmers go to cereals to look at varieties to try and increase their percentage as much as 2%. When we analysed our current farming practice, which we felt was efficient, as we were using 6 metre cultivators, 8 metre drills, 12 metre combine and 36 metre sprayer, we were shocked to find that we were compacting the ground by as much as 86% per year. The graph at the bottom, the white areas illustrate where a wheel or a vehicle has not travelled. If you use 4 metre equipment within this system, that percentage rises to as high as 140%. Look around the country on the way home, and look at the different directions of wheelings and all the, the operations you can see, which the dry weather has, has uh, shown us. This slide demonstrates by utilising the machinery we already operate, but by controlling its wheelings and its whips, and using GPS and RTK technology, we can reduce our compaction from 86% down to 25. This is a reduction of 61%. Due to the constraints of the road widths of 3 metres in Western Europe, a 12 metre system would be the most that we can currently achieve today. This is the ultimate, resulting in a reduction down to as little as 13%. Sorry. 
So controlled traffic farming reduces compaction, fuel use, capital expenditure, whilst increasing yield and profitability. This is the first step in joining 83% of the world to no till. Grain drying is an expensive part of the harvest operation. Typically, 30% of farmers' crop will be dried in any one year. In the last few years, this has increased as much as 100%. To put it into perspective, drying on our commercial grain store, a 1% weight loss from over drying at 200 pounds a tonne can be as much as 80,000 pounds lost income. This is only based on weight loss and doesn't take into account the additional fuel electricity and labour. Whilst on my nutfield travels, I came across microwave moisture measuring probes used in the cement industry, which worked at 0.001 of a percent. Working with a local company called ZTech, completely out of the agricultural industry, they have developed a programme which works out the relationship of grain being dried. Using these probes has meant that the grain can be dried fully automated and programs are dried exactly 15%, reducing weight loss, labour hours, electricity and diesel <coughs> usage, which is a positive contribution to the environment. They've also now invented an app for the iPhone, so whilst combining, you can control your dryer and turn it on and off as you please. Whilst on the Contemporary Scholars Conference in Pennsylvania, we went to Gettysburg. As I climbed out of the coach, in front of me, there were solar panels on a tracking system. I went into the main building where there was a television screen on the wall showing the energy production and efficiency of the panels. On returning home, I looked at mounting solar panels on the grain store roof as part of a planning condition to produce 10% renewable energy. A structural engineer reviewed the building, which needed an additional £80,000 to reinforce the roof withstand the additional weight. Dega, a German tracker manufacturer, were consulted and were happy to install the first commercial tracker system in the UK. <coughs> to maximise the feed-in tariff, the fixed payments, we built a 50 kilowatt system. This cost £185,000 and has a return between 9 and 16%. The bank gave us a 100% loan for the project. It will take seven years to pay back the capital and three years to pay back the interest. This has no cash flow implications on the business. The track has produced an additional 35% extra income over and above statics due to moving, rather like sunflowers following the sun. The government on the fix has guaranteed a payment tracked by RPI for 25 years. The panels manufactured by BP, the fuel company, have a warranty for 25 years, and the transformers and trackers guaranteed for 10 years. This gave us confidence to invest in this project. I believe this is a perfect farming diversification project to harness energy from the sun, especially for arable farms. At peak usage is in the summer months of drying crops. Since constructing the panels, the local community has asked us to engage in a wind turbine which will provide us with an annual rent and subsidised electricity. The Nutfield Scholarship has been the most rewarding time of my life. At the point of applying, my reservations are how could I be away from my business for so long? Surely I'm irreplaceable, and without me the business, business would fall into chaos. People ask me, how could you afford to be away for 20 weeks on your Nutfield Scholarship? Over the past 18 months, I've been taken out of my comfort zone, had time for reflection, and I've seen my business with a fresh pair of eyes. During my Nuffield journey, we signed contracts for 10 years for two additional grain lorries and one additional 21,000 tonne grain store. We've signed a further 10-year agreement to contract Venture Farm 1,550 acres, 18 miles away. At the Contemporary Scholars Conference, the Australians and New Zealanders have convinced me the future is only land, and I have since bought my first 100 acres. Whilst doing my scholarship, all of these have resulted in my business turnover increasing by as much as 25%. On a personal note, 
I've met some inspirational and wonderful friends for life. I've broken four bones <laughs> and married a wonderful lady. So when people ask me, how can you afford the time to do enough film? I reply, how can you afford not to? Thank you.